Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming after the lunch break. Uh, I will tell about employee data processing and why it is important uh, for those who represent employers, of course. Uh, if you look from the perspective of employer, of course, employers want to ensure security of the business and uh, probably to process as much as possible, control as much as possible. But in this terms, we cannot speak so. And uh, why uh, it is important to find balance in the unequal relationship between employer and employee and the uh, employee. Uh, of course, uh, the first and the main reason is the human rights of the employees. But uh, if we look at the negative impacts which uh, reduction of uh, rights of employees uh, may cause, uh, these are on the screen. And uh, generally speaking, it may cause chilling of uh, human rights in case uh, when employees are excessively monitored and uh, data of uh, employees are monitored, uh, the employees may have feeling that uh, the big brother is watching all the time during the uh, time when they are at work and sometimes even uh, if speaking about dis distance work, if they are at home, uh, they are under the supervision of the employer. And uh, therefore, uh, on June of this year, uh, the Working Party of Article 29 issued and adopted uh, the guidelines about uh, data proce uh, process processing of data at work. And uh, my, today's, uh, my today's presentation is mostly based on those guidelines. Um, when speaking about uh, employee data processing, uh, we should never forget the main and basic data processing principles, which are the same for all kinds of and types of data processing, which are adequacy of processing, uh, uh, sorry for my stumbling, <laughs> uh, legitimate purpose of processing, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> legitimate purpose of processing and the, the fact that data are kept up to date and are stored and processed no longer, that, that it is necessary in the amount which is necessary for the specific reasons and, uh, uh, and uh, that technical and, orga and organizational means are appropri appropriately used for uh, protection of those data. Um, when we speak about uh, employee data processing, there are already uh, specific uh, articles of current data protection directive which state that employees have to be informed about existence of any monitoring uh, and purposes of it and also that uh, data uh, subjects cannot be uh, subjects of automated decisions without the, their consent. There are also some new things which uh, will be implemented by G the GDPR. Um, one of them uh, is data process protection by design, um, which uh, is an obligation of uh, employ employer to use uh, user-friendly settings by default uh, towards their employees. And also Article uh, 35 also requires to uh, to uh, conduct data uh, processing impact assessments in case uh, of use of particular technologies towards the data of employees. And if you are interested about data processing impact uh, assessments, then you have to take a look on uh, guidelines regarding data pr uh, processing impact assessment, which are also uh, issued by Working Party of Article 29 during this year. And this is a copy of the scheme which is also included in, in uh, those guidelines and I will not get into uh, much details but uh, briefly, briefly looking at it you can see in the left uh, upper corner that uh, data per, uh, processing assessment have to be 
conducted if uh, the processing is likely to resu uh, result in high risk. And if your answer uh, to the question whether it is or not is yes, then you have to go through the whole those scheme and at the end you will uh, come to the answer whether actually the processing will or will not result in high risk and at the end you probably will have to consult with your local uh, supervisory authority on the further directions toward processing of employee data. Uh, but uh, let's not talk about this anymore and go further. Uh, what uh, Article 88 of the GDPR says that member states have also their power to uh, state uh, and to implement specific rules on employee data processing. Um, what about Latvia and this ter these terms? Um, last week, uh, state secretaries meeting uh, supported the new draft of uh, personal data processing law, but unfortunately no specific rules are mentioned regarding uh, employee data processing there. But uh, speaking about guidelines on employee data processing, uh, speaking in general, general terms, there are nothing revolutionary there. There are many things which are already around us for years, but still it is important uh, to uh, remind ourselves and our employers what are those main principles. And uh, the good thing is that guidelines consist more uh, guidance on uh, usage of uh, modern technologies, which uh, is the one of the main question uh, in how limit in how large limits the modern technologies can be used to monitor the actions and the use of ITC by employees. Uh, to rem uh, remind you, the main um, grounds of uh, processing of data, you can see uh, some of them which are mentioned in the GDPR and first four of them probably are the uh, most common. And in this case, I will speak more about the constant uh, in regards of employee data processing uh, because the contractual necessity is logical uh, in the relationship between uh, employer and employee. And I will not tell you about uh, processing of uh, such regular types of data as name, surname, ID, and address, and more we will t speak about uh, uh, processing of data obtained from device, from vehicles, from ICT. Um, and another very uh, important uh, uh, legit, uh, legal ground is legitimate interest, which is one of the main in, uh, grounds when processing uh, those data obtained from devices because it's very rare, rare case when you can uh, process data on a constant basis in this unequal relationship and uh, in the guidelines working party of article 29 uh, specifically told that uh, the consent cannot and should not be the ground of uh, processing of employee data because of this very unequal relationship between employer and the employee. Uh, and why it is not advisable to use the consent for processing of employee data. Uh, consent may be revocable at any moment and then when it is revoked, that, uh, then um, the employer do not have legal ground for further uh, data processing. It means that uh, maybe process which you want to continue, you cannot because of the lack of the consent. Uh, and in the case uh, when the consent anyway is used, uh, no negative consequence may uh, have to apply if the employee uh, decides not to give you the consent. And uh, in any case, when the data is processed, and uh, including the consent, uh, specific and clear information regarding processing of data of, of the employees have to be provided to the employees. Um, what if the employee uses devices given by the employer or uses software installed in the devices provided by the employer. Uh, also guidelines uh, uh, specifically uh, says that employer have to think about 
uh, the software and about the devices given to the employees and all the settings, uh, there have to be as much as uh, friendly in regards of employee data processing and uh, uh, lack of action and the fact that uh, the employee just starts using the device or the software is not qualifying as the consent because there is lack of action. Uh, one of the most popular process uh, during the whole employment relationship and sometimes uh, the process which does not result in the employment relationship but just uh, is uh, the b very beginning part of it is the rec recruitment process and nowadays more and more employers ha uh, are, have the tendency to check social media uh, during the recruitment process and be or before the recruitment process and the uh, working party of article 29 says that it is not a good practice because uh, checking for information, looking at information uh, is processing of the data and it does not have legal ground at that moment. Um, uh, as the only aspect when a uh, working party admits that this uh, checking of social media might be uh, allowed is uh, when uh, the relationship is already over and when the employees have non-compete clause and then the, there might be a situation when the employer uh, and, uh, goes to LinkedIn or to any uh, other social media and checks whether in reality the non-compete clause works and uh, the employee has not changed the place of, uh, has not, didn't went to uh, the competitor. Of course, it, it's like, it cannot always be the truthful source, but it's, it's uh, one of the options uh, and it's one and one of the very rare uh, legal grounds for that. In any other cases, uh, speaking about social media, employers are not allowed to make, to force uh, their employees to use uh, social media accounts provided by themselves. Uh, and uh, of course, social media are not the only sources of data uh, in the recruitment processes. and. Um, as we know that uh, before starting processing of the data, uh, data processor has to provide enough information uh, about the processing itself. And that in that moment when uh, there are many issues in many companies because uh, CVs of the future employees are sometimes sent without any asking for it, and uh, after the recruitment process is over and uh, the employer is chosen, uh, sometimes uh, CVs are stored without any further legal ground. And uh, this is one thing to maybe to deliver to your HR department that uh, unless you have any other legal ground or unless you have notification to the data subject during the recruitment process, uh, you have no legal ground to store uh, in your data database uh, all the CVs which have been sent in during it. Um, speaking about usage, yes. I have a question actually. Of course. Isn't it supposed to be a legal uh, vital interest? It's supposed to be a legal ground for, for processing data, right? Yes. The, the question, okay, I'll repeat it. Yeah. Uh, the vital interests of the company is supposed to be a legal ground for processing data. That's right. I would say vital interest uh, is, uh, you, can, uh, you can mention vital interest in regards of natural person, but uh, it might be not called vital interest, but legitimate interest. Like based on. Can you go back, yes. back a few slides yes, where you listed sure. all those? The yes, we have them. Vital interest. Yes. Vital interest. But uh, in regards of companies, we can uh, speak about legitimate interest. Vital interest is, uh, in many cases, if 
for example, if someone in an accident and uh, their data have to be processed without their consent, uh, so the person is dying, and then I have to process them, it is his or her vital interest. Then it is... Uh, let me explain my point. Yeah. You just thought that uh, checking uh, social media profiles yeah. is prohibited uh, while hiring a person. Not, so yeah. uh, somebody has been smart enough to consider that a company must uh, hire somebody uh, without checking, without making sure who is that person, what he thinks, how he behaves. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, somebody has decided that uh, uh, employees must hire uh, blind. No, no, no. It's it's not like I, that. I, I think for, that for uh, any data. Uh, knowing the person who do you hire yeah. is a vital interest of the company, and this is completely l legal ground for processing data. Uh, if you find uh, like logical legal ground, for example, you need person with the perfect rep reputation. And then you, for some kind of reason, which is uh, very valuable in your uh, working environment, and you can find the legal ground for it, and you can uh, find the right arguments for it, then it works. But if you just uh, have a tendency to check everybody uh, with the, if you state it in your documentation, and if the person is aware of what you are doing, for example, before recruiting, in the description you write, okay, we have rights to check your social profiles. It is an ideal, like in, in the ideal world, in the ideal world of GDPR, it would be so that you notify before you do it and the person is aware. So it is okay to check social media profiles. I just have to make a note, a clear note on the... Uh, on this, uh, in the for, for all potential recruits that I will be checking their profiles. I would say you have to notify and you have to provide legal ground. You have to, uh, the like information why you need that. And they have to be valid. It the don't have to be uh, the like, need to know the want. person who I'm I going to recruit is not considered to be a legal ground. My vital interest to know my next uh, employee. Isn't uh, that uh, a, a legal ground? You know, it is. You cannot cannot obtain excessive amount of information because uh, you are going to the other data processor, which is social media, and you are obtaining information there. And it is not the purpose why that your future employee has uh, stored his or her information there. And uh, I would say just like that, with doing nothing, because I want to do it. I want to check everybody. It wouldn't work under the GDPR. If you document it in your procedures, in you, if you notify your recruits, then yes, it would work. Okay, let's continue. That's good that you have questions. Uh, speaking about ICT usage, uh, nowadays there are several disputable questions as, uh, speaking about who are employees in, the, uh, in these years when remote work is becoming so popular and when uh, work sharing is becoming popular, uh, sometimes it's difficult to tell who are and who are not employees and uh, also whether when the person doesn't have uh, an employment contract, whether he or she is considered employee. And uh, in the guidelines, working party says that um, even freelancer, even person who uh, does not have a contract but is in the wor uh, working relationship and employee, employ employer relationship is considered uh, employee. Um, and also uh, another the uh, problem is, of course, it, that uh, uh, remote work is also becoming more and more popular and it uh, leads to monitoring of ICT, uh, not only in our workplace, but also outside our work workplace when we bring our devices at home. And here you see the whole list of different types of uh, monitoring of ICT usage, starting from mobile phones and uh, 
devices within the bring your own device policy. Uh, also, it might be the traffic uh, and content monitoring. Uh, this might be also uh, monitoring of mobile device and uh, this, uh, distance uh, location of mobile device in online uh, in online regime. Um, and also, they might be wearable devices, and um, maybe you have heard in Sweden that there are already implemented chips in the bodies of uh, employees, and they are, of course, they are not considered wearables, but they are like uh, pieces of information which are stored in the bodies and obtaining information. Uh, all these uh, are considered, uh, all of them, uh, monitoring of ICT. Uh, and uh, the following uh, uh, story will be divided into two parts, uh, monitoring of ICT usage at work and outside of work. When speaking about the work, uh, mostly the legal basis of processing is legitimate interest, which is a necessity to protect interests of employ employer, usually security or integrity of the network or the content of the network. Um, main principles which employers have to follow are um, proportionality of measures because even sometimes when we want to obtain as much as possible about our employers, uh, recent uh, court practice of uh, European Court of Human Rights and also uh, all those guidelines which were published during the, this, uh, this current year uh, by the working party uh, insist that uh, rights of employees and employers have to be in balance and excessive obtaining information regarding employees is not acceptable. And uh, uh, guidelines also insist that employers have to have as much uh, policies uh, as it is necessary because uh, as the previous speaker said, uh, you have to document everything, only then you can prove it uh, if the inspection comes. Because uh, all the employees have to know to what extent and when and why uh, data has been monitored and what he or she can do about it uh, so that uh, employees are aware of the situations where their personal data are obtained and may adjust their actions to it. Um, if, we, if you have to decide whether to monitor traffic of communication or the content, uh, monitoring of traffic is less invasive in regards of uh, rights of employees than the monitoring of content because uh, if you monitor the content, uh, it impacts uh, the rights of access to information and the rights of secrecy of correspondence, which is very like, important right of every human being. Um, and uh, if uh, you have to balance uh, whether to monitor the traffic or the content of uh, communication via certain web pages or uh, because you are scared that something may leak, that maybe you should decide um, to block this web page at all and then the problem will be solved rather than uh, monitor communication on the regular basis. Uh, and a good practice, which I have already seen in some banks in Latvia, that um, even though employees are prohibited to use some social media sites or some specific web pages on their uh, work com workstations, computers, then uh, the alternative for this is free Wi-Fi all, all over the building or specifically located uh, solely uh, placed computers which can be used by employees by, uh, for their own interests and for their own personal use. Um, yes, let's continue. And uh, uh, even though the, that the device uh, given by the employer uh, to the employee is uh, owned by the employer, uh, if we look at the folders, files, and uh, software which is used, 
then uh, in those moments when, when sometimes uh, something is marked as private, like my private photos, my wedding photos, uh, anything like that, it is a signal for employer that uh, this is a private territory and employees uh, may have such private territory even at, in the devices uh, issued by employers and they, uh, this right of privacy have to be respected even though the ownership of devices uh, employers. Um, if we speak about ICT usage outside the work, uh, first what comes to my mind is bring your own device policy, which is quite common uh, everywhere now. And uh, first of all, uh, if such policy exists, employees have to be informed to what extent they are allowed to use their private device for work purpose and what they can or cannot do uh, with their own device. If the device is issued by the uh, employer for private use and work uh, use for uh, work reasons, then uh, the limits of the private and work use have to be stated. Uh, and also, uh, employees have to be fully informed also about tracking, not, play, not only place, but also time, because uh, employees employers, I'm sorry, uh, have to think about uh, that maybe not uh, tracking not during the whole day is important. Maybe sometimes tracking during the working hours is important. It depends on situations. It depends on your business. But uh, uh, this uh, goes together with minimization of data processing because uh, the aim is not to process as much as possible, but to process as little as possible for uh, effective reasons. Um, so, let's continue. And uh, continue with mobile device management, which is also closer, closely related to bring your own device policy. And it is a process when your employer or third person on behalf of your employer can access uh, your mobile device, uh, install updates, or maybe track the device. And uh, it also has just the same, uh, like previous devices have uh, to be, the whole process have to be uh, documented, the whole uh, process have to be uh, delivered to the employee because in case if some breach happens, then uh, the employee is not even, if the employee is not informed about the processing, the employee is not informed also about the breach of their rights. Uh, and this is this will be the last one. This is not about a device. This is more about vehicles, which is also common practice. Uh, there are two aspects of, um, of use of vehicles and monitoring of use of vehicles. Because one thing is we can detect uh, the location of vehicle, which is data about the vehicle, and we can also detect. Uh, information about the driver. Sometimes these are camera installed inside to prevent uh, misuse of cars or it might be also uh, cameras to detect the, some traffic accidents. And uh, in this case, uh, guidelines say that uh, it is prefer pre preferably that if the cameras are installed and are turned towards the driver, uh, it ha has to have a notification sign that be aware you have been monitored. And also, um, it is unlikely uh, to have legal basis if uh, the location and monitoring is being uh, conducted on after the working hours, which is also kind of problem to solve because um, uh, those uh, GPS monitoring systems work all day and night, and sometimes uh, maybe the, uh, there might be, and if there is, of course, uh, it has to take place, and monitoring has to take place if there is legitimate interest after the working hours, if you don't want uh, your car to be stolen, to be 
uh, driven far away somewhere. Uh, of course, you may place this as legitimate interest and con conduct monitoring after the working hours. But if there is no such necessity, then uh, it would not be a legitimate basis for such data processing. I hope this was useful and this was it. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything. Uh, okay, now we, uh, you can uh, put the questions to speaker. Um, I, uh, while you are uh, thinking about your questions, I could add some uh, information uh, that, uh, as I understand, the Data State Inspectorate in Latvia are preparing uh, one uh, guideline about uh, data processing in uh, workplace also following this uh, Article 29 recommendations. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, this is a very uh, hot topic because how it goes together with uh, uh, breach notification. So mm -hmm. if I want to notify the breach, I, I have to know that somebody uh, make a confidentiality pro uh, uh, breach and, and send some photo somewhere, so I have to monitor this employee to, to say uh, yes. for inspectorate this news. Yes. How, how do you think about it? <laughs> what do I think? Uh, of course, if, it, if the breach uh, takes place uh, within the regular work, like workflow as, as it is conducted, uh, then I think, uh, first of all, the means to not only just for monitoring everything and everywhere, but to just effective means to uh, find out the issues of data breach have to be found. Uh, because in every case when the employees are involved, uh, not only interests of employers have to be uh, taken into account, but also uh, rights of employees. And sometimes employees, this uh, less protected part, and then their rights have to be more protected. And all the other obstacles, of course, have to be taken into account. The, this, the, how, how dangerous the work is, how, how valuable the data, the, pers the processed data are, and all those things involved. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, don't go away. Uh, we could, we can make a small discussion now. Thank you. Thank you. Also with you, and I see Jan. Uh, maybe somebody want to ask the question. We, we could uh, make a discussion here now about some things. I think you raise the hand. Yes, I have a question. Uh, uh, regarding, so when do we need uh, just a consent from an um, employee <clears throat> that, let's say, surveillance is going on? When? When the consent is okay? You, yeah, yeah, and when do we need a permission? So, where is, so whenever we use any personal data, whenever we just when is the case when we just inform and when we ask for permission? Okay. Uh, there are several legal grounds which were mentioned. When you have uh, other legal ground, which, for example, is, is placed in legislation, in law, then you just inform that processing is being conducted. Uh, when uh, there are several cases also mentioned in the GDPR when the Consent is one of the options, for example, transfer of data to the third countries outside the EU. And in this case, uh, consent might be the re relevant uh, legal basis uh, if everything else is uh, done correctly. Then yes, then it could be. Uh, when you have to have consent else, for example, when you don't have legal, other legal grounds. For example, here, uh, if, you find, if you have to find legal ground, you don't have law, for example, you don't have 
consent yet. And if you can find legitimate interest, you better use legitimate interest. If it is strong enough, it, it, if it is security, if, you, if it is your business interest to uh, keep your network safe, your communication safe, then yes, it is legitimate ground. But you have to document it. You cannot just, oh, my boss told me and it is so. It, it doesn't work like that. Uh, in those cases, better not to use consent because it is revocable. Uh, can I just add? Can yeah. I just add uh, to that? Uh, where you use consent as a ground in principle, you have to get the consent before you process. So if you're going to uh, get consent from an employee um, for monitoring, you can't monitor until you've got the employee's consent. That's clear from the text of um, the consent clauses in the GDPR. It's also clear from the decision of the European Court of Human Rights in Barbalescu and Romania mm -hmm. uh, about two months ago, where the uh, monitoring policy was changed after they had conducted the monitoring on the applicant. And the Court of Human Rights said that that was an infringement of Article 8 of the Convention. So uh, if you want to rely on consent, you have to get the express consent in advance. Uh, you can't monitor without it. Okay. And also, if you need to exercise the uh, employment contract, it is another alternative legal ground, and then the consent, separate consent is not necessary. We always suggest to the clients to avoid consent as much as possible yeah. because it's uh, first you have to uh, make a, a proof that you have obtained consent and it's revocable at any time. So mm -hmm. always it's better to find some other ground and consent is a last resort. Oh, thank you. Uh, I would like to add that uh, until now, as far as uh, I, I work uh, in a Latvian uh, environment, I have seen uh, uh, many so-called consents that cover everything uh, in one page. So every possible data processing that is, of course, wrong. Yes. So maybe only 10% of this is consent and other is something else. Um, so, in any case of consent, you have to keep in mind that you have to inform the data subject thoroughly, like provide all the necessary information. It will be sometimes pages of information. And uh, if you have obtained uh, consent previously, which does not comply of future requirements of GDPR, it has to be updated and obtained again. Um, okay. Any other question? Yes. Hello. Uh, you, you said that unfortunately your draft law, um, yeah. th there are no provisions in our draft mm -hmm. law regarding pro uh, procurement, mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, yeah. recruitment. <laughs> um, what provisions are needed? Uh, because we, we have our labor law and uh, till now uh, we thought that it, it is enough, uh, that everything is said. But well, there, there are some problems uh, with, uh, uh, ty uh, for example, uh, storing um, duration time. But what what is needed exactly? Actually, personally, I haven't thought about what is needed. I have heard about experience. I think, if I'm not mistaken, of Germany that Germany uh, used those different. Uh, aspects which are allowed to be decided by countries and uh, I think also in regards of uh, employment uh, relationship also to decide something which will be specifically for Germany and well, it, we have I think heard it, about the German um, yeah. law also but it's uh, the only we have heard uh, are interested in, in what what's missing you now in, in our law because uh, yeah our Ministry of Justice um, is in, in opinion that uh, uh, there no, no additional provisions or, or amendments in our law needed. Uh, and uh, we are one, wondering, you, you, said, uh, you also said that uh, yeah. unfortunately we 
don't have this in our draft law. Mm -hmm. what, what is needed? Uh, I think initiative from the legislator is needed, uh, like to think about things which might be useful, which might be uh, used in future in terms of future technology. I have heard, I think, if I'm not mistaken, maybe somebody from Germany may correct me, uh, that uh, regarding Germany, the case was that they allowed to use employee data in an anonymized way for statistic purpose, something like that, uh, which is another, uh, it, it also is something like that, like uh, can be used probably for statistical mm -hmm. purpose. Maybe we need it, maybe we don't. Discussion about the, that would be great, of course, but yeah, uh, yeah. time is not in our side right now. So. Maybe initiative from, I don't know, maybe uh, not even from the those who are uh, responsible for the super supervisory of data processing, but for those who actually conduct processing of those data uh, is needed. If there is no, maybe somebody, not somebody, but some company who is interested, maybe they will uh, just... Uh, well, we, show the initiative yeah. and something will be inserted in the yeah. draft. We have we'll ini see. initiated a discussion about that uh, in the Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, mm -hmm. also in the Latvian uh, Information and Communication Association, but, but uh, now it's, it's, it's not clear what, what, to, what to offer, what, what is what missing in our labor law. And, uh, I think isn't it not enough it is to, to say that uh, it, it, it would be uh, pro leg legitimate interest, uh, we'll, we'll, we will, as, co as a company, we will be able to prove that it is legitimate, legitimate interest, interest to process uh, these data. Not all processing of data, not all, yeah, 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 yeah not yeah. all, yeah. all the data. interest, not all commercial interest is legitimate interest, and uh, I would say maybe what if you, as representative of commercial company, say that I might have those interests, then maybe this is what is missing, that the statement of such kind of quietly, widely uh, ex exp expressed in words, uh, interests have to be mentioned so that companies can use it in future. But in that case, we, we have to have uh, amendments in, uh, I don't know, a thousand laws. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, but because uh, of for, uh, for example, if you have, um, uh, just l let's imagine, if you have uh, the interest to process data for whatever purpose, for statistical purpose, in uh, data processing law, if you need anything else, what what is else what you need? Uh, what else? Well, I mean that these, uh, all these, um, uh, like, like statistics, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, what, what is needed in our law to, to tell that um, for the statistical purpose, it, it's, it's okay to, to process data. It's allowed to process the data for statistical, uh, both official st statistics and also the statistics which is uh, made by companies. I, I know that there is, in the GDPR, there is a point about the statistics, um, but I, um, I, I, yeah, yeah, it's um, general. Maybe I can add uh, this com uh, comment or uh, a little bit answer to your question is that uh, we already have a labor law and there is some things that is prohibited. I think that this is the point that uh, we prohibit some processing that is not possible. And the uh, second point that uh, GDPR provides uh, that uh, state can make exceptions from regulations. So, do we need any exceptions for data subject rights? For example, uh, uh, right uh, to data portability. So, do we need to uh, limit right data portability uh, for employees? Not to go for employer and said uh, as far as data are processed on the base on contract, I please forward my data there and there. Mm -hmm. Do we need this exception? I don't know. I just wonder that there could be some 
uh, exceptions, do we need or not? No, we don't have anything, yes. And we have labor law with uh, some prohibition of processing of some certain data that uh, goes together with uh, sensitive data or special categories of data about that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> one of the problem is that our labor law do not uh, define what is the uh, job applicant because this term is used in the law. Uh, but uh, there is not clear what does it mean and when person becomes an applicant, when he gives some documents or just call I want to work here, uh, uh, is, he, is he already or she applicant or, <laughs> or no? What is the, this uh, term means? That, that is my comment on your question. And yes, and actually HR people usually claim that they very often receive unwanted CVs which are just coming to the email and then they just have them and they already process them, that's it. Uh, you want to add from the Germany point of view? No, I'm Irish. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, uh, just to say that um, uh, in my trawl through the various bills and acts and so on, uh, I'm pretty certain that there are specific uh, labour law provisions in the Polish bill and in the English bill as well, so that if you're looking for precedents, uh, it's not just in Germany um, that the uh, legislators are taking advantage of the space for implementation. Uh, I can't remember uh, what they've actually said, because I was only looking for Article 82 and damages, but I do remember that it's there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see other things, Poland and the UK as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's a good option to look for ideas yeah. all over the Europe and then see that maybe there is something which can be useful here as well. Um, who wants to add something or discuss other topic? Uh, maybe not just labor law, but we had about data breach, we had about compensations, we had uh, data security. Unfortunately, these, those, these speakers are gone, but we can uh, try to speak instead of them. No? Okay, we, uh, we could make uh, maybe a short... Uh, Short uh, summary. conclusion, yeah. summary, yes. Uh, you have to speak or no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, then uh, uh, I uh, always um, compare the situation with GDPR and previous legislation in that way that um, we had uh, cars in the uh, 70s, uh, the only security system were, were uh, seat belts, and now we have cars with cameras, etc., uh, etc., et airbags, and so, but nobody, uh, nobody cancelled the seat belts. So, this uh, new regulation is uh, with the same uh, ground, so legal ground for data processing, data subject rights, but it comes together with some new security uh, requirements that the, uh, are new. Yes, but this, uh, those seat belts are there. So, so this is the main, uh, main point uh, if we compare the requirements and uh, how to understand these new requirements. 